thousand. It's crazy mix match day, crazy hair, and I represent my Dirk No Whiskey. We're gonna do some cinematography today in Photoshop. Um, as you can see, this is what it'll look like when we're all done. Uh, we're gonna save it for web. Notice it repeats an action over and over while freezing another part. And we're gonna go to File, Import, Video Frame, Selayers, and you're going to find and select uh, the file that you want to use. Now, if the file is grayed out, that means you cannot import that kind of a file. So you're going to have to convert the file with Handbrake or import it into iMovie and export it out using QuickTime to get an MOV file or a file that's compliant. And so I'm going to choose Select Range From because I did a really long clip. And so I did it a few times just to make sure that I got a good one. So I'll, I'm going to uh, go in and find the one I want. And what you're going to do is hold down the shift key and then scroll. And I want to make sure I get a full cycle of the movement. So we'll see where the ball is right now. Hold down shift. And we're going to have the ball go down, up, and back to complete the cycle. Okay? So make sure if it's a pendulum, you go all the way back and forward. Don't just go here because you're going to miss here. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit a Window. And we're going to open up Animations. And with animations, you're going to have, see all of your um, images broken down from the video. And what we're going to do is hold down the shift key from 1 to 48. And we're going to click on where it says the second and hit no delay. And you're also going to make sure uh, we did the complete cycle. What I like to do is hit command R and then go to the rulers and kind of line up from the first frame, kind of like where the basketball is at. Okay. And then, um, so that was the first frame. And then I like to cycle through, okay, and I can play it. And then I hit the play button and s to make sure that it goes all the way down, comes all the way up, and it stops right there. Okay, so notice I have a few extra frames. So I'm going to go back. So these extra frames, 47, 48, we don't need them. So hold on to shift key and select all the extra frames, click and drag them into this little trash can, uh, delete those same layers, uh, those same layer or frame layers. So 47, 48, we deleted those. So I'm going to delete the layers as well. Okay, so 46, 46, make sure those match. Now what you're going to do is try to find the place that you want to freeze it to. I'm going to freeze it here in the middle because I like the way these guys are jumping. So be creative in where you freeze it. And that's number 39. So I'm going to go down here to number 39. And I'm going to click and hold that down to duplicate it. So you'll see it says 39 copy. Now we're going to drag that up to the top layer. Double click, mask. Okay, because we're going to mask it. Create a mask by clicking on this square circle thing. And you'll see it. there's a white area. Now what you're going to do uh, hit D on the keyboard uh, to reset your colors to white and black uh, right here on the left, the bottom left. Hit that mask button. Notice it'll, it shows selected. B for brush. And now we're going to be able to paint what the, um, the area that's going to be moving. What we're going to do is mask. We want everything to stay um, still, but we're going to color in only the parts that are going to be moving. So if you notice, um, the ball is going to be bouncing like here and here so with the brush tool and again with the brush I would choose make sure you have a circle that's no, not feathered so a solid circle with a decent diameter and make sure the hardness is all the way um, to make it cut and so if you make a mistake let's say you're painting all of a sudden you go whoa that's crazy what you can do is bottom left here click on those two arrows switch it and then you can uh, paint it back and erase that part and paint only what you want and then switch those arrows back and then you can go in and left bracket right bracket changes your uh, size so if uh, he's moving I'm gonna have to um, mask him too uh, everywhere he moves now this guy he's jumping all around behind him so I want to make really sure and I would try kind of zoom in here uh, to make sure that I don't get around uh, the back end here, otherwise it's going to show the guy jumping behind. All right, so that's about all the area that could move, and everything outside that red area is going to stay still. 
So I'm going to click on that square circle again so it's selected. Now if you notice, it's the out. everything is selected outside of that circle. For example, if you hit delete, it's not going to work. Okay? Notice it deleted everything else except that guy. So don't do that. Hit Command Shift I and it will invert the selection to only Mr. Davis. You're going to click on the first animated frame, go all the way to the end, hold on the shift key to 46 or whatever frame that you're, the last frame is, and you're going to select the uh, white mask area on your layers, and you're going to hit the delete button or key. And so you'll notice that it'll make a black area uh, just like that. Now go ahead and play it. And as you can see, it's pretty good on the right side here. Okay, see how it glitches over and he loses part of it, um, his arm. But I didn't do the best job of uh, mapping that out. So if you did, if you did make a mistake on um, your selection, uh, it doesn't uh, work properly, you might need to um, mask it again. So um, what you can do here is just uh, click on mask and brush and then just select more of that area um, and then again uh, select from 1 to 46 or all of your frames command shift I and delete okay and now I deleted more of that area now if your image or video is a little bit too dark, too light, you want to adjust the look and feel of it, what you can do is we're going to go to the, do an adjustments layer. So click on this half black, half white circle. And then you can choose uh, any of these options that you want uh, to make it look a little bit better and personalized. For me, I always like curves. So I'm going to select curves. And you should have this adjustment window open up. If you don't have that, just go to window adjustments. And then I can click on this little finger and I can make my lights lighter or darks darker here just by clicking colors and changing it up and down according to how I want it to look. Okay. Another one I like to use is uh, hue and saturation. So if you want it to have a little different kind of a look to it, for example, I can take my uh, saturation down a little bit to make it more soft. Okay. Or if I wanted more vibrant colors, which wouldn't work the best for mine, you can do that. Also put the the lightness and the darkness, or if you want to change the hue colors as well. Uh, but don't get too crazy, <laughs> because you're going to have a lot of fun with that. Now, when you're finished, we're going to be saving this for web, uh, because again, it's only viewable for web. So you're going to go to File, Save for Web and Devices, and if you have this grayed out, that means it's not available. That means uh, whoever installed Photoshop onto your uh, Mac, uh, her computer didn't include that option uh, for the full installation. So you either have to download the plugin or use another computer. I know my, all my iMacs have this, so you might want to put it on there. So you hit save for web and devices, and then what you're going to do is use the default um, uh, images here and hit save. Now, if it, you do hit save and it comes back and it says error, memory, it can't like finish the save. Then what you're going to do is change your image size. It basically means that your image size is too big and your computer can't handle it. So I would just change the width to 600 and then the height will change with it. And then you can just hit save. Like here, if I try to open it, it'll open in preview or something. You're like, hey, it doesn't work. You, you see all these images. Um, that's because we saved it for web. So it's only going to work properly if we open it with the web. So what you can do is just drag this file um, into like a uh, browser like this and then you'll see if it works. So that's uh, a little bit about um, cinema graphs. Have fun with that. You can have a lot of cool effects. It'll be fun.